remembering the birth of your soul. We will explore the key stages where the soul dwells and how it is aligned with the upward path. How can you forget the one who created your soul? Humanity seems to be in amnesia of their true nature. Our true nature is a spiritual nature. It is the nature of the soul. It is the nature beyond birth and death. So the soul takes on the lower vehicles of consciousness, such as a human body, personality, particular set of mental, emotional body. And the soul uses them temporarily for that particular incarnation. And once the time runs out, this incarnation ends, but the soul carries on. So in this lifetime, there is nothing more valuable than reconnecting with the soul, remembering the soul. This constitutes the, the true spiritual awakening when a person reconnects with their soul. Because the awakening of inner light or your chakras, the kundalini, is awakening of simply of your energy body. That is just another body. This is your etheric body. Although it is experienced in very profound ways. However, from the perspective of the soul, it is not such a major deal because the soul still awaits your conscious remembrance, your conscious reconnection with the soul. So awakening of the chakras, inner light kundalini is just one step further, but not yet with the soul. So the soul truly starts to utilize in the best way this incarnation cycle when one it realigns back with the soul. We will get to know that at the beginning, there is awakening of inner light, your chakras, kundalini to some degree. And this then follows the awakening of a soul spark, which is like a reflection of the soul. You connect with your higher self, and at that degree, when you connect with your higher soul, you also awaken your soul spark, which is like a reflection of the moon in the lake, or reflections of the sun rays on the water. It is not yet the soul. So opening up to the higher self, or your light body, Merkaba, and so on, at that stage, you establish a connection with a reflection of the soul. And then there is a stream, golden stream that goes further upwards. It, it is very well known as well in the Sikh tradition, especially its more advanced branches, that the soul's energy reside or accumulate behind the third eye center. And this is called... A doorway. So you have to not only activate your chakras, but you have to go to concentrate within the third eye center and then leave the five senses. This is where you begin your upward journey. But then there is the astral plane, which is like a forest crossing the astral planes, subtle planes or psychic planes. They are very tricky, like in the forest, in the Amazon jungle, with all sorts of creatures, good and bad, and trying to do whatever they do. But once you go beyond the forest, that's where your higher self awaits, and you see the reflection of the soul. 
from the higher self, you go upwards to follow the stream now, the soul stream, which is not yet the soul, but now it's a more direct stream that you connect with. And you follow that stream upwards to meet your I am presence vehicle of consciousness. And this is very well known in the ascension teachings, ascended master teachings, the mighty I am presence. And that's where generally you connect your soul at the level of the Brahmanda. Beyond that, there is Par Brahmanda, and we go up and up all the way to the origin of the soul. The origin of the soul, once you go all the, those layers upwards, is in the divine. The, the origin of the soul is in the divine. Although the soul may have came forth in the lower universes, for example, in one of the Parbrahmanda universes, most commonly more advanced souls are born and they may also enter even in the lower universe, which is Brahmanda, uh, via goddess Durga. She births the souls. The same way in the Parbrahmanda, the souls may be born, but wherever they are brought forth, whether in the divine or below in the Parbrahmanda or even below in the Brahmanda, wherever the soul is born, brought forth wherever it is born into existence in the heart of the soul every soul is made of or is of the supreme emanation of god so even if considering the soul is brought forth by goddess durga into this universe she still has a connection to satpurush and that is how via this gift of Satpurush, the gift of God, she can give birth to a soul. So in essence, even if Goddess Durga gives birth to the soul, we could consider her as the mother. And the same way would be in the upper planes of Parbrahmanda. However, the origin of the soul or the essence of the soul is Satpurush, the supreme light of God, emanation of God. However, there are many magnetic fields, and these magnetic fields, for example, the system of the planet Earth, it contains the souls, it contains your spirit here, and you have to, we may say, graduate from this system. And on a larger cosmic scale, you have to graduate from the Brahmanda universe. So Goddess Durga won't let you go easily unless you have matured. If you are still considered as a spiritual teenage she will make sure that you won't run away and don't cause trouble and you take your time to mature and grow until she will be satisfied that now you can leave her creation or the creation below and now you can ascend and go upwards to depart from our local universe so wherever the soul was brought forth what is most important is to remember its true origin, is to hear this truth, first of all. Your soul is listening. To hear this truth that the origin of the soul is not this universe, none of the Brahmanda universes. The true origin of the soul is neither the Par Brahmanda heavenly abodes. The true origin of the soul is the very essence of God's supreme light, the supreme consciousness. The soul needs to hear this because as your ears hear it, as your subtle ears hear it, 
as your soul, so to speak, hears it through the, these vehicles of consciousness. It opens a stream of remembrance, a stream of awakening. Maybe at this stage, for some of you, this sounds extraordinary or hard to comprehend. Or some of you say, oh, I've heard this a few times already. However, when the truth is spoken, it awakens something beyond your present comprehension, beyond your present conscious awareness. And it goes further, higher, deeper, closer to the true origin. Why this is important? It is because there are so many midway stations. Some assume that their soul is born in this universe and they meditate upon it and they experience cosmic phenomena and then they see the goddess Durga or any other goddesses or gods of this universe, uh, whatever religion they follow, whatever tradition they follow. They're just different names for the same beings and then they feel that they have come to God, and that's the origin of their being. In the grander scheme of things, that's not, not even halfway towards the true home. The same thing happens with intermediary states of self-realization, such as presence or non-dual realization, the bliss of awareness, which may be assumed as a final stage of the self and the origin of the soul, which again is, let's say, three quarters or less towards the true origin of the soul. So I would like to read a little passage from the Treasure Trove book of Guru Granth Sahib. If the floor of this palace was a mosaic of diamonds and rubies, and if my bed was and cast with rubies, and if heavenly beauties, their faces adorned with emeralds, tied to entice me with sensual gestures of love, seeing these, I might go astray and forget you, and your name would not enter into my mind. It is directed towards the Supreme God. If I were to become a Siddha and work miracles, summon wealth and become invisible and visible at will so that people would hold me in awe, seeing these I might go astray and forget you. Your name would not enter into my mind. If I were to become an emperor and raise a huge army and sit on a throne, issuing commands and collecting taxes, all of this could pass away like a puff of wind. Seeing these, I might go astray and forget you. Your name would not enter into my mind. What a beautiful passage of the true origin of your soul. So whatever experiences come what may, in whatever challenges or positions of power, wealth, or siddha powers, yogic powers, whatever heavenly abodes would you inhabit for the time being, even after leaving this body, these are simply places and simply experiences. And even if they last for hundreds or thousands or a million years, they're no compare to the true abode, to the true home of the soul. The biggest treasure of all is returning to the true home. For all other treasures are temporary and will not last. They are received and they will be left.
another little passage, if I could live for millions and millions of years, and if the air was my food and drink, and if I lived in a cave and never saw either the sun or the moon, and if I never slept even in dreams, even so, I couldn't estimate your value, Supreme Lord. How can I describe the greatness of your name? The true Lord, the formless one, is himself in his own place, which is Sat Lok, Sat Purush. I have heard over and over again, and I so tell this tale. So please instill within me the yearning to return to the true home. Because until the yearning to return to the true divine abode is not lit up within you, it means that your attention is engrossed in either material, subtle, or spiritual energies and places. And therefore, you will have to go through material, energetic, spiritual experiences again and again, over and over, until they will expire. And when they do, then you will light up a deeper fire within you, yearning to return to the true divine home. Someone asked me recently, how can I love myself more? And my answer was, by loving God more. Now, this normally doesn't cross the mind of somebody who opens, awakens into inner love. When one awakens into inner love, they awaken love within, they realize that love is within, and they start sensing, feeling love to everything around them. This love is a spiritual honeymoon. It is a wedding, wedding of spirituality and the spiritual honeymoon, but it's not the reality yet. The reality goes after the honeymoon passes. Therefore, even by the experience of inner love, you will realize that this love is within. This love is expressed as seeing love everywhere, feeling love for everybody, wanting to hug everybody. But it is not love for God yet. It is not a yearning to return to true divine home. So this love is a spiritual teenage love. Then, of course, it opens into a heartbreak sooner or later. The faces of those souls who are attuned to the true name, to the divine light and sound current, are anointed with the mark of grace of God. And this is what the true Sadhguru Kabir has brought as a gift to humanity before any other guru has ever walked on earth. He brought the divine sound light current. And when the soul gets attuned to the divine sound and light current, it is, we may say, marked as the soul of God not anymore as a lost soul. Of course, the souls are never truly lost. They will all be redeemed at some point. They will all be guided back home at some point. But the souls who are not attuned yet to the light, divine light, sound current, to the Shabd or the true name, to the true word, they're not yet anointed. They're not yet marked with grace of God. So they have to wander around and around until by grace they will meet a guru and this being will attune them back to their origin, towards their origin. So what knowledge, even what realization can be sufficient without knowing your own soul. 
I see today in many non-dual circles how people, fortunate ones, attain a real non-dual awakening, a real realization of awareness. But what happens then is that they forget the soul. Now, listen to this carefully. I will repeat again that when you attain certain realizations, non-dual realization, presence realization, awareness realization, these are intermediary stages. And what happens when people realize those stages, they forget their soul. So this is why even when initiates realize these higher levels of consciousness, and even when the gurus realize these higher levels of consciousness, they forget their soul. What happens then is that even though they have attained the first stage that we call of enlightenment, which is equal to awareness, that they still reincarnate, they come back. Because realization of awareness or non-dual realization beyond the duality of energies, that's what it is, stepping above the dualities of energies is not the true home, is not the source of your existence. So I see again and again, more and more, that many of the present day spiritual traditions forget the soul. Therefore, whatever is attained to that degree, a reincarnation will need to take place again at the appropriate environment. And you will have to be born again, you will have to grow up again, you will have to awaken spiritually again, you will have to catch up again to that stage of realization where you left off last lifetime. Then hopefully by higher grace you will come back to the grace of the guru or the grace of the one who can attune you higher to the divine sound and light current. And then you will continue your journey upwards. Now, many people assume that when you become enlightened, your soul is free automatically. That's not the case. Just like when you become present and you can be the space for the energies, that doesn't mean that your soul is free. You have now simply gained the ability to be present, to be the space for the energies. Some people assume that when the inner light opens, they're already free. Their soul is liberated. <laughs> That's not the case. And of course, it becomes even more alluring at the highest levels of consciousness, such as awareness and so on, to assume that automatically your soul is free. Coming back again to the, some of the greatest sages, let's say Ramana Maharashi, who brought forth the non-dual inquiry, which reached the West very well. So he himself was a Jnana Yoga Guru, and he himself was centered in his heart. And he himself always focused on the self, which is God above, beyond all. And therefore, he himself spoke of the self in such a manner and had the authority to speak so. But other students of his and students of students of his and what is happening today in the non-dual circles, no one has reached that stage where Ramana is, even in the realization, and no soul has reached that stage either. So therefore, speaking of the absolutes and reading the books of the absolutes doesn't mean much at the end of the day, apart from fancy language, apart from lofty contemplations. And when I look into the soul of the present day teacher, I can see that they have awakening to awareness where they assume that that's the end of the self and their soul is still struggling with the worldly matters, with the astral planes, psychic planes, with the lower regions, the soul is encapsed. 
So therefore, remembering your soul is the first step. And remembering the origin of the soul is even bigger step forward. Remembering the origin of the soul. Now, if we ask Christians, they will say that Jesus will save them. If we ask Buddhists, they will say that the soul is another entity and there is only the emptiness. But yet again, Buddha was fully awoke and liberated being in the highest divine regions. And certain Buddhist monks have reached that stage too. But the mainstream Buddhism is an intermediate level religion, spirituality. Some Buddhist monks, Tibetan monks, they can achieve amazing results and they can pass on into the Parbrahman, the heavens. I know certain circumstances of these occurrences. So as we look around, if we ask Hindus, they will say that Lord Shiva is my God, is my father, is my source of my consciousness and being. As we look around more and more keenly, more and more carefully, we see that the origin of the soul is still very veiled, even in the yogic traditions and major religions around the world. So the remembering the soul, awakening, reconnecting with the soul is first step. The stages of self-realization give you awareness. They give you ability to comprehend this plane, what's happening here, and then that plane, what's happening there. So the stages of self-realization, they give you overview of what is here and what is there and what is there. And your identity simply softens and merges into a space of presence. Your attention softens and merges into non-dual space. Your attention softens and merges into the light of awareness. But the soul is still hanging around. It is only your attention that merged into that field of existence, that plane. Just like if you go to France, you feel more like a French person. Especially if you would live there for 10 years you would become to identify as a French person. You might learn the language, which let's say is a non-dual language. <laughs> you might have croissants in the morning and you might feel very French. And then you go to Japan, the next region, and live there for five, ten years, learn Japanese, and now you identify as Japanese. <laughs> so this is self-realization. You come to this place, you explore it, identify as that. And then you move on to the next stage as that. And then you meet the light of the Brahman. And then you say, oh, I am the light of Brahma. No, the light of Brahman is Brahma. <laughs> and you are just seeing that. You have opened to it. You now can comprehend it, see it, and be within that light of Brahman. But... The Brahman is the light of Brahman, not you. Your soul is simply dwelling there and your attention is merged into that light, that blissful light. So who are you truly? Who are you truly? So the, the principle of attention and how it merges into fields versus your soul who keeps traveling through those fields. Therefore, it is the complex totality, but at the end of the day, your soul carries on. If one lifetime you have come to see the light of Brahman and identified as such, your soul next lifetime might say, well, I've seen that, I experienced that, now and you want to see something else. <laughs> so it's simply going to move on to another place and we'll say, okay, now I want to identify myself as the motherly nature of Durga, for example. 
and next lifetime you will become a devotee of Durga and she will be your supreme mother and the supreme love of the mother of all and you will become now the mother of Durga of all. But the soul had a nice experience, merged into the love of Durga. And next lifetime it will say, oh, now I need something else. <laughs>